Okay, welcome. Uh, I'm Bob Matheny, Mayor of Zebulon, and you might have guessed this is the Zebulon Mayor Show. Uh, we're going to talk today about the budget, and joining me is Bobby Fitz, our finance director, our new finance director. You're not really new anymore, though, are you? No, about <laughs> four months now. About four months now. But this is the first opportunity that I've had to have you on the show. Um, tell us just a little bit about how you came to be finance director, what some of your history is, Bob. Well, uh, when I graduated from NC State in 1996, in May, uh, my job search began and uh, it led me here. I started here as a temp in August for about a month and uh, then became permanent uh, September. Um, so I'm coming up on 17 years uh, with the town. I've been uh, accounted one for the first year and that, that uh, here and then assistant finance director for the next 16 almost, right. and then and finance director. For those that don't recall, Emily, uh, who was the right. finance director, went to Garner, and she's now Correct. their finance director. Right. So you just uh, moved from one office to the next right. and took over full responsibility. Right. And I understand you've just added a new employee to take the position that you had. So Correct. Correct. Uh, yeah, we just, Kiana Peoples started actually uh, Monday of this week, uh, August 5th, and uh, we're glad to have her aboard. She came from the uh, Department of State Treasurer, and uh, so we're excited about that. Well, good. Back up to speed. <laughs> okay. That's right. We're going to talk about the budget today, and that's, of course, why Bob's here. Um, you know, we, we had a really tough budget year. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was hard to put it together. Uh, right. Zebulon has been hit hard uh, through the census. Uh, through some of the large manufacturers and right. depreciating their, their some of their assets, which mm -hmm. lowered the tax base, and then the loss of the whole harmless funds, which we'll talk about a little bit. We got a bit of a reprieve on right. that, but not a full reprieve. Right. So we'll talk about all of that. But let's let's just start, Bob. Why don't you uh, just sort of give us some of the uh, the overall highlights of, okay. of the budget, and then we'll get into some of the details. Okay. All right, the, uh, the goal of staff and the Board of Commissioners was to prepare a budget that, that minimized the tax increase and are still retaining a strong fund balance uh, while still providing the same services that everybody's uh, accustomed to in town. Um, like I said, it was tough to do that. We didn't really, we tried not to cut services because last year we, we cut some. Um, and we'll go over a couple of changes uh, later that we did make. Um, but the, some highlights of the budget, uh, general fund budget totals about $8.815 million. That, that's including some rolled over funds from, from last year. Right. Um, there was a one and a quarter cent tax increase, uh, making it uh, 52 and a half cents uh, for this year. Uh, we did use about 490,000 of uh, uh, general fund balance, unappropriated fund balance. And uh, we did luckily have a late addition of uh, some hold harmless funds that we'll, like you mentioned, we'll talk about in, in a few minutes. But uh, uh, we cannot change the tax rate once it's been set, so we're, we can't undo that tax rate increase right. that we did. But yeah. what we'll do is just. Uh, yeah, let me intercede there, that because I get asked that question a yeah. lot, and uh, we, we by general statute have to have an adopted budget and tax rate by the end of the year and right. people are probably already getting their tax bills from Wake County. Right. I know I got mine. Yeah. So we had to uh, adopt that budget, say this is our tax rate, we can't go back and change it, modify it in any way right. and and so the money came a little bit late for us. Otherwise we would not have had to raise taxes. Right. So right. I, I just, I get asked that a lot, Bob. Yeah. I felt yeah. like I really ought to yeah. expand yeah. on that. Right. But, but excuse me, go ahead and uh, uh, let's uh, talk about some of the other uh, highlights. Okay. Um, we are going to include uh, continuing funding of the Zebulon Wendell Express bus service uh, with TTA and CAT. Um, we are going to complete the Shepherd School Road project uh, this year. That kind of began this past fiscal year. Um, water and sewer rates are increasing uh, according to the merger uh, agreement with the city of Raleigh at five and a half percent. Wake County fire revenue, uh, we are including uh, half. Uh, we had three safer grant positions that uh, we were, uh, they were funding salaries and benefits for three guys for the past two years 
fully. Um, we have to uh, pick that cost back up going forward and uh, Wake County is going to fund their half. Uh, that was kind of, we had a little uh, back and forth with them uh, whether you know they were going to fund those positions, but they are uh, going to fund those in the end. Yeah, Chris uh, Chris Perry, the fire chief, and I went and spoke to uh, the finance, and we mm -hmm. we did some lobbying on that, and right. uh, felt like it was the right thing to do right. because uh, a lot of people may not realize it, but our fire departments are merged. In other words, we provide not only service to the, the municipal limits, in within the municipal limits, but also outside in the fire mm -hmm. district. So Wake County pays mm -hmm. part of that. So any fireman that we have and equipment we have benefits both the right. fire district outside the municipal boundaries and inside. So that was the right thing for right. them to do was, was to uh, live up to, uh, to that original commitment. Right. Uh, well, let's talk about personnel for just a minute. Um, we spend a lot of money on people, don't we? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> you'll see the, uh, we had last year 62 authorized positions. Um, this year, uh, FY 2014, we had, through some attrition, um, we have 58 authorized positions. Uh, we lost uh, two positions in police and two in public works. Um, you'll see our uh, personnel or salary costs is uh, just short of three million. Uh, once you add in uh, benefits and, and everything like that, you have about 3.6 million, or which represents 40, 45 percent of the budget. Which, right. like I said, that's a that's a good chunk um, to and, spend on. And, and part of this uh, uh, making the budget fit the revenue, if you will, uh, had to do with those uh, two police and two. Uh, Public works positions that right. were, were uh, just not filled because right. we felt like that that we had to cut staff somewhere and, right. and they had left through attrition. So right. uh, maybe we can get them back someday, but right now we just didn't feel like we could continue right. to afford those positions. Right. Um, Going to expand on personnel just a little more. Uh, yeah, um, just <coughs> by eliminating those four positions, that saved uh, about one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars in this year's budget. Uh, which was key. I mean, we didn't want to lose them, but uh, they they did leave on their own. We didn't have to do a reduction in force, which right. was, you know, nobody wants to do that. Right. Uh, it almost could have came to that, um, but we didn't. Uh, any positions that were come open this year uh, will be reviewed by the uh, manager, and his recommendation will be brought, of course, to the board on whether we're going to fill those. Right. Because um, you know, depending on how things are going at the time, you know, that'll be up to the board as, as to whether they want to refill those. Well, you know, to to um, expand on that just a little bit, this year was a hard bid budget, um, and next year will be as well, and right. that's why we have to keep our eye on that. I, you've heard me say any number of times we have to get to a what I call a sustainable budget, meaning right. that we're not going into our reserve funds and uh, revenues and expenditures are balancing uh, right. and we just need to get back to that. So we'll, that's why all of those positions will be looked at right. as, as they become open. Um, anything else? Um, we did include uh, one and a half percent maximum merit raises this year. Uh, we uh, did away with it last year. It was just uh, a one-time bonus system um, that one and a half percent uh, equals about fifty-four thousand, uh, which includes FICA and retirement. Right. Um, that's if everyone was to get the maximum one and a half percent. Now, not everybody's going to get right. that, so you know, it, it'll probably equate to less than fifty-four thousand. Uh, we did build in a possible increase uh, in insurance costs. Uh, we're forecasting possibly fifteen percent, hopefully. It won't come to that, but uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, Probably the bulk of that's going to be health insurance, when you right. think. Right. Uh, the health market seems to be in a bit of a turmoil. Right. And uh, the, uh, just to, again, expand on the 1.5%, and, and, and you said it, but it is purely on merit. So right. it, it, based on job performance, right. determines. Strictly merit, not cost of living. Correct. Yeah. Right. 
Well, uh, we had to cut some capital projects that we just didn't feel we could afford. So let's we talk did. about those a minute. We did. There were some uh, projects, capital projects in the uh, CIP that uh, just wasn't, there wasn't funding for them. Um, we eliminated three police cars. Uh, finance software uh, needs to be uh, upgraded. Uh, street paving, um, which we kind of have on a rotating every other year type uh, basis. Uh, we postponed a lot of that. Uh, the a data server we needed to get, we, we postponed that. There's a ball field drainage project at Zebulon Elementary School that we are uh, postponing uh, due to lack of funding. Um, and there's a fire GIS computer that, that they were uh, needing and uh, fire station HVAC replacement all is getting pushed off. Just had to had wait. Years. Right. Well, it's not all bad news. There's some things no. we were able to do, so right. let's, let's talk about those. Right. Uh, we are going to be doing a group of projects, uh, financing them together over a 10-year uh, period. Uh, the total of those projects is about 560000 uh, A lot of these projects are uh, not emergency needs, but, you know, a couple of them are. A couple of them are uh, going to be up for replacement and repair in the next couple of years at least. Um, we're going to be getting a new public works emergency radio system. The old system doesn't work anymore uh, due to a bandwidth change uh, with FCC. Um, we have some masonry repair that needs to be done here at Town Hall. Um, fire station roof repair, uh, which Wake County is going to uh, pay half. Uh, the municipal complex fire alarm replacement, uh, HVAC replacement at Town Hall and uh, Public Works also, and then the UDO, Unified Development Ordinance, um, which is way past due, I guess. Give a, uh, a thumbnail, thumbnail um, sketch of what a UDO is. Maybe, you know, I know that. I think it's, it's it streamlines uh, development, future development for uh, for any builder or anything else that's coming into town. Uh, I think it just streamlines the whole process. So everybody knows um, going in, you know what what the requirements are, and uh, things like that. Well, it's almost like a codification of the ordinances again, and, mm -hmm. and bringing bring them in and streamlining them, as you said. Right. Uh, and you're right, it, it's past due. Periodically you have to go back and be sure that there's nothing conflicting and confusing uh, right. to developers right. or, or anything else. So um, that was one we just didn't feel like that we could put off. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, how we're going to pay for these. Okay. Uh, we are going to be pulling $100,000 out of capital reserve to go towards this, and then we're going to be financing the other uh, roughly 460000 uh, over a 10-year period. Uh, so that's going to make our annual debt service payment for these projects uh, around 52000 And, you know, um, like I say, we, we're using some cash, you know, on some of these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that fix us for the future? I mean, do we have anything else that we are expecting. <laughs> I mean, I know you always have the unexpected that could jump at you. But. This should satisfy a lot of our, our needs in the next couple of years, um, unless, you know, like you said, some emergency uh, repair happens unforeseen, and we'll cross our fingers and hope that doesn't happen. Um, yeah. Well, the concept is to, uh, is to get out of this flat economy get back right. into a growing economy, which, you know, we're seeing some, some good right. signs. And that will come come along and increase our tax base and, mm -hmm. and uh, in turn, the revenue. So, uh, you yeah, know, there's, there's some real hope there. And that's there what is. we're trying to do is ride out these hard times and yeah. get, to that, get to that point. Um, well, we did some other things to save money. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those a bit. Yeah. Uh, we did change our recycling service. Uh, we were going, we had a 98, excuse me, a 48 gallon uh, container that was picked up weekly. Um, we are switching to a bi-weekly pickup uh, with a 96 gallon container. Um, that saves the town about $11,000 a year. Um, matter of fact, this week, they happen to be starting the change out process from the smaller, they're picking up 
smaller can leaving uh, the 96 gallon can. Um, that required the town to sign a one year extension with uh, Waste Industries. Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, hopefully everybody will adjust to the, the change. There's going to be a sticker put on the can so everybody knows you know which week their pickup is. Well, you're right. The uh, the cans actually were distributed this week, and right. not only is there a sticker on the top of the cans, there's uh, a uh, uh, there was one that hung on there that I actually cut out and put on my refrigerator. Oh. So uh, I would add that I have um, personally had a larger container, right. and there's a few others that have been around town for some time. Right. Um, we, we do an awful lot of recycling in my house. The only thing that I've found that I need to do now is to cut my boxes down and be yeah. sure that they go in there flat. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it, it really, I believe, will work very well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. uh, something we didn't really want to do, but uh, we, we had, to, uh, had to save money somehow, so right. that's what we did. Right. Uh, we, we thought about some other things What uh, and did some other things. Let's right. talk about those in a minute. Uh, we, we considered a few other things um, to save some uh, money. Decreasing the frequency that we mow the DOT off ramps of 64 and 264. Uh, maybe going from right now we're mowing about every 10 days, uh, changing that to about once a month. Uh, that could only projected about $2,000 savings a year. Um, it would have given flex flexibility to public works. Uh, they're down two, two people. Um, it would have given them some flexibility in doing some other things. Um, but we just didn't think uh, it, would, it would be totally wise to, uh, this represents a gateway to our community, right. uh, these right of ways, and, and we just didn't want them to get unsightly. Now they pay us to mow them four times, three times a year? I think it's just like, like that, four. four. Uh, which is nowhere near enough. So, no, no. you know, we do get some reimbursement from DOT, right. but you're right, it's the gateway of the community, and if you want right. to put your best foot forward, you want people to right. uh, appreciate the entrance. Right. Uh, well, just there was a couple of other uh, quick things. The, the express bus service, we, we actually really did look at that yeah. and, deci and decided it was worth trying to keep. All right, yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, there were some funding issues with that, uh, whether we wanted to uh, whether we thought it was really uh, cost effective to keep it, uh, whether there was enough use on it. Uh, the numbers show about 20 people a day from Zeblin ride to Raleigh on it. Um, so, but we felt it was uh, a good service, wanted to keep it, so it, uh, it stayed in. And I, I personally felt, and I think the board obviously agreed, uh, mm -hmm. they went along with it, that. Uh, you know, we, we just need to be part of Wake County and right. um, part of the Wake County transit plan. And this is, while well, you know, we're, we're not large enough to even be considered for light rail at this point. It kind of helps tie the communities together. Mm -hmm. uh, we just didn't want to bail right. out and be on our own. And, right. and, and Wendell and Lockdale felt the same way, so right. we all three stayed with that. Uh, well, this, um, uh, we, we did look, I'll just mention the fact that we did look at furloughs mm -hmm. and decided against that. That option is always there. Uh -huh. We can always go back and furlough if, if right. we need to. It seemed kind of counterproductive to give one and a half percent merit raises and then furlough people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. so uh, we're, we're trying it. But, it, you know, if we have to, that's, that's an option that's always open, even mid-year, if, right. if we wanted to do that. Right. Uh, let's talk about um, what I call philanthropic money. Um, we, we didn't completely give that up this year. We right. try to help some of the organizations and, and right. uh, how many how many actually applied for money? Uh, I think there was nine, eight or nine uh, this year that applied. Um, <clears throat> there was 21,000 requested. Uh, we have a policy of uh, maximum of $5,000 per year and no more than 1,000 to any one organization. Right. Um, but yeah, this year we uh, funded uh, the Zeblin Chamber of Commerce $1,000, uh, East Wake Education $1,000, uh, Shepherd's Care Medical Clinic $4,000, and the Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast Committee uh, $500. Those are pretty much in line with um, past years. Past years, uh, 30, so $3,500. Right. We didn't even use the full $5,000 right. that, that, uh, that we needed. Right. Uh, well, you know, I want to 
just quickly before we get into enterprise fund, just say that, that with regard to the whole harmless money, and you mentioned that earlier, uh, we lost about, or we stood to lose about $420,000 in revenue, uh, sure. which was state distributed whole harmless funds, and I think I've covered what that is before, so I won't go into that. But we were able to uh, squeak out, along with about 110 to 15 other communities across the mm -hmm. state, 50% uh, of what we would have normally gotten. So we will be getting a little over $200,000, uh, right. which uh, means that we just simply will not go into our reserve funds, which we have to have reserve funds just for operating capital. Right. You know. Right. Uh, so, but we did, we, we get it one more year, and yeah. uh, and I've been told by people in the legislature, That's we'll it. come back and ask us <laughs> next year, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Doesn't mean we won't ask, but, you know, I, I don't think that yeah. will happen again. But right. we appreciate the fact that we at least got that, and while we were not able to reduce the tax rate, uh, we had to increase the tax rate, we right. weren't able to go back and change it, right. we at least now... Um, won't have to go into the reserve funds, which is going to help us in, in right. future budgets. So right. uh, we, we're very happy that we were able to, to save some of that. Right. Well, Enterprise Fund is, um, is water and sewer fund for those people that don't realize it. And, and you don't really uh, subsidize that with tax dollars. Right. It's, it's self-supporting uh, Enterprise Fund, just like a private business would be. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's, let's just talk about that for a minute. Okay. Uh, yes, we, as you know, we merged with uh, the city of Raleigh, our u water and sewer utility, uh, in 2006. Um, the agreement was, I think, scheduled to be completed in 2021, I believe. Uh, we have <coughs> amended that agreement to uh, 2024. Um, in that agreement, it calls for uh, rate increases uh, each year in the next seven or eight years um, and this year it's five and a half percent so what that does to an average uh, bill of five thousand gallon per month use that'll increase the bill about five dollars and thirty two cents uh, from last year to this year um, some of the other fit capacity fees and development fees are also going up a little bit that's uh, fees for like a builder you know uh, build a new house or you know, any other construction type project, not necessarily residential, residential and non-residential. Right. Um, well, that fund, uh, you know, I, I know you hear it, I hear it, and, you know, we know our water rates are high and so we're, I mean, they are. Uh, right. It's no comfort that we're not in that boat by ourselves. So are some of right. the other communities. Uh, Right. But, you know, I, people on that watch this show have seen me do this a number of times. You have the base rate and then you have our rate and the mm -hmm. difference between there goes to pay off uh, uh, a lot of these projects. They've seen people working out in the streets, you know, mm -hmm. lining the sewer lines. The, right. the sewer plant is being increased in capacity. Uh, it also gives us capacity of water right. that we can access so that we have enough capacity to grow because right. we have to to buy a portion of, of what can be produced. Right. Whether we use it or not, we have right. to have access to that portion. And then when right. we use it, we pay for what we use. So mm. it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Right. But that's one reason our rates are high, uh, is that we're in that payoff period. Now, right. once we ever get to the end of that, uh, and our rates are about double what Raleigh's are, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll revert to Raleigh's rates. Uh, one community in Wake County, Garner, is now completely paid right, out. I right. think Wake Forest is closed. And, close, yeah. and uh, some other communities are getting closer. But right. uh, as you said, we're out to about 2024 20, right now. Right. Uh, and you know, what what happened? We quit growing. I mean, right. when, when, when the economy went flat and the houses weren't in, people weren't buying water. Right. Uh, people quit watering their lawns or one right. thing or another. And, right. and uh, so, uh, you know, when when water sales went down, it it, it pushed, pushed pushed it out, it down, yeah. and uh, so you know there's there's always uh, cause and effect. Right. Well, let's let's wrap this up and talk about what the overall citizen impact is. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the overall citizen impact. Um, we didn't increase garbage and stormwater fees this year. That's, that's one thing. Did not go up at all. Um, 
the average uh, home price in Zeblin is $130,519. So on that average uh, bill, your uh, tax increase would be about $16, $16.31 a year, uh, roughly $1.36 per month, that equates to. Right. Um, and for your average water and sewer increase, like I said, a, a 5,000 gallon per month user, uh, would be about 532 a month or 6384 uh, per year, uh, which comes out to about $80 a year increase um, on the overall, uh, on the a citizen impact okay. on average. Okay. Well, you know, I know that, uh, that we've covered a lot of ground, and uh, I know that there may be some questions from, from right. some of the people that are watching this. Right. Uh, they're welcome to give you in your office a call. They're welcome right. to give me a call if I don't know the answer, you're who I'm coming to. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I can't answer them, but you know, I'll come to you. How many times do I knock on your door? Right. Uh, but you know, we're here to serve the public and right. we want them to understand this. So uh, we encourage them to call if they have questions and, and instead of just guessing right. at, at, at a situation. Uh, right. Bob, I appreciate you being here today. appreciate no the work you and your staff do. Uh, we um, appreciate you folks watching the show, and, and we hope that this information is useful to you, and we'll see you next month.